Welcome to test chamber 4. The enrichment center regrets to inform you that this next test is impossible. Quit now and cake will be served immediately. I want cake. What's up my wizards, it's a dev. From SPMTG on the YouTube.com down there, we like magic, you know by now. An announcement day has come and gone and nothing actually happened. Wizards decided not to ban anything at all, which means that at least until Amon Ket comes out, and maybe even after that, we're stuck with two basic decks at the very top of standard, and those two S-tier decks are Mardu Vehicles and Sahili Combo. So today, I'm going to bring you the first in a series of decks that are specifically designed to combat these two decks above all else. And we're going to start with everybody's favorite, Jund. Now, this is not the Jund Energy Aggro deck that's been making the rounds since the Pro Tour. This is still a Jund Energy deck, but it's much more mid-range, and it's going to devote its energy consumption to, hear me out, Dynavolt Tower. Why Dynavolt Tower, you may be asking? Well, a couple of decks that have been making waves lately, in the past three weeks to a month here, are Grixis Tower and Teemer Tower. Teemer Tower, more so than Grixis. It's been getting a lot of attention lately. And there are definitely good reasons to play both of these decks, but there are also bad reasons to play those decks. You know, in Grixis Tower, you get things like Unlicensed Disintegration and Fatal Push and Torrential Gear Hulk too. But aside from Gear Hulk, you really don't have a whole lot of solid threats. Teamer Tower has much better mana because it gets to play a tune with Ether and a bunch of threats, especially Tireless Tracker, which is a fantastic card. But that, that deck doesn't have the removal that Grixis has. So what happens if we just take the blue out? Sure, we don't get Torrential Gear Hulk and we don't get a couple of counter spells, but we get to play a bunch of pretty meaty threats, which is really, really nice against the control decks in the format, but we also get to play a buttload of really, really good removal, like Unlicensed and Fatal Push. And Tower is surprisingly good against the two big decks in the format. As long as you got five energy, you can take out nearly any creature that Mardu plays other than Heart of Kirin, but we've got plenty of other ways of dealing with that in this deck. And you can take out the Sahili combo. Just target Sahili with your Dynavolt activation and blow her off the board. Tower also counts as an artifact towards our unlicensed disintegration artifact count, and it provides energy for things like Bristling Hydra, which is pretty sweet too. It makes Harness Lightning and a Tomb with Ether that much better and they're already fantastic cards to begin with. There's just a lot of good reasons right now to play Dynavolt Tower. It can pick off small dudes and it can bust up the combo and it provides us some amount of inevitability. This can do like 12 damage a lot of games to your opponent. So, you know, good against Planeswalkers, direct damage to the opponent and picks off small guys. That's literally good against everything. That said, even though a lot of the deck is focused around this card, I don't see the need to play four whole copies. The deck list is insanely tight, and we really don't have room for that fourth, and I'd rather use that card slot on something that either helps out Dynavolt Tower or can just end the game. We've got a few of those cards, too. Now, to go with our tower, we're going to play 22 instants and sorceries, most of which are removal, but we're going to start with some stuff that fixes our mana for just one mana. It's a great deal. We're going to play four copies of a Tomb with Ether and three copies of Traverse the Olvenwald. That's right, slight delirium theme in here, but not too much. There's only like six main deck cards that have delirium, so keep that in mind. But late in the game, Traverse can go get whatever creature we freaking want for just one mana. Tutors for one mana are just the most ridiculous deal. <laughs> that's, that's a crazy deal. And, um, you know, it allows us to play a toolbox strategy. We just go get whatever creature we want, which allows us to play fewer copies of creatures, you know, open up slots for other stuff in the deck. Lots of reasons why you'd want to play this thing. Not to mention that the other mode on it ain't half bad either, you know? Go get whatever, you know, basic land you want in the early game for just one mana, making sure you get your drops, fixes your mana, thins your deck. Traverse is just good no matter what you're doing with it. And a Tomb with Ether plays a lot like that too, you know? Go get whatever basic you want in the early game, make sure you get those drops, fix your mana, and in this case, get energy for not only Donovan Tower, but Bristling Hydra, Harness Lightning, Aether Hub. There's just a million reasons reasons why you'd want to use that energy. Now it's time for the lightning round of removal because we're going to play a bunch of removal but there's pretty obvious and set in stone reasons for why we're playing all of these starting with the four of Fatal Push here. Fatal Push is just the best main deck card that we have against Mardu vehicles you know. It kills 90% of the stuff they play and all the most dangerous stuff they play read Heart of Kieran. <laughs> so, but it also kills you know Thraven Inspector, Toolcraft Exemplar, Veteran Motorist if they're doing that, Walking Ballista. There's a bunch of stuff 
that this thing kills pretty much everything in that deck. So, you know, even when it's not revolted, so do that. And when it is revolted, you can kill a Felidar Guardian and break up the Sahili combo. So, you know, Fatal Push is just probably the single best piece of removal in the format. We'll play all four. We're also going to play four Harness Lightning here because in this deck, it's super special. You know, we've got Dynavolt Tower. So we've got a tower out. We play a Harness Lightning. We can basically get the two energy from casting a spell and the three energy from Harness Lightning, funnel all of that into Dynavolt Tower, and basically Harness Lightning becomes a Lightning Strike. <laughs> it can hit players now, which is especially important with all the um, Planeswalkers running around in the format. There's not only Sahili, but Gideon and Chandra and Liliana to worry about too. So the ability to take out Planeswalkers or just use the Harness Lightning as damage to the face is pretty sweet. And and you can use it in reverse of the way I was just talking there, you know. You have a Dynavolt Tower in play, you'll get the two energy for casting a spell. And then you can just drain five energy into Harness Lightning and kill a big creature. So there's that option too. Four of Unlicensed Disintegration, because we're not dummies, and you got to play all four. I mean, I could stop there. But there's like 11 different things in the deck that either are or produce artifacts, like Tireless Tracker produces artifacts for us. So we can pull this off, especially in the late game, which is when it's most dangerous. So even early game, if we don't necessarily have an artifact out, it's still a murder, which is just fine against literally everything. Kills Felidar Guardian, kills all the big creatures in green-black counters, kills everything in Mardu vehicles for a pretty cheap cost at instant speed even if it doesn't get you the three. But when it does, it can finish an opponent off, put them in a horrible situation, or kill one of their Planeswalkers too. So Unlicensed is another one of the best cards in the entire format, and one of the entire reasons, if not the whole reason, to play red in the deck. We're going to play a two of To the Slaughter in the main here, because To the Slaughter is very good against Planeswalkers and its instant speed, which is kind of important too. Um, you know, against some of the decks in the format, you'll just catch them with nothing on the on the board for them but a Planeswalker, you know. Sometimes they'll play Sahili Riot, turn three, onto a naked board, and just do the slaughter. Boom. So especially on the play, that's fantastic. Um, it can also just catch them off guard, and if you've got Delirium late in the game, this can kill both Guardian and Sahili if those are their only two permanents. So, <laughs> to the slaughter is just crazy right now. It's great post-board against decks that like to side in Chandra and stuff, so lots of reasons to play to the slaughter. It's probably a little bit better than Ruinous Path, and I don't know that I'd be super comfortable with the, you know, double black turn three on Ruinous Path for that matter. Last spell we're going to play here is just a one of Transgress the Mind, which is sort of removal, but this just, just think of this as sort of a pre-sideboarded copy against Jeskai Sahili and other control decks, because Transgress just tears those decks apart early on in the game and is still decent later on in the game too, because those decks obviously like to hold cards in their hand. So the ability to exile something is also pert sweet most of the time, so that's cool. Just Transgress is a card that I'm surprised isn't seeing a little bit more play now because it just completely demolishes and dissects very easily those Sahili combo decks and we'll actually finish off the playset in the board. That's how good I think Transgress is. And we're just going to play two Planeswalkers main deck and I figured I'd show you this Planeswalker before the creatures because it'll provide a little bit of context to some of these creatures. We're going to play a two of Liliana. Now I just said that I wasn't quite comfortable with double black on turn three for Ruinous Path. Well, you're not going to be able to, or you're not going to be playing Liliana too often on turn three. Although, Liana can be okay turn three against decks that play Walking Ballista. You know, they go turn two Walking Ballista, you're on the play, you play Liliana, kill their Ballista, or at least force it to pop something. So that can be important on turn three. But for the most part, we're playing Liliana so that we can grind in the late game, get all of our creatures back from the graveyard when we need to, have a little bit of Delirium Supply, and have a way of just pressing a win button if we get her loyalty up high enough. But the main reason to play Liliana, honestly, is that second ability. It gives us a lot of late game resilience and allows us to return any of our creatures to our hand, a lot of which have like Enter the Battlefield abilities and just crazy stuff like that. So like, we definitely want to play this because there's a lot of removal in the format and being able to like outpace other decks and get our guys back and grind the game out is a really, really important ability to have. 
But let's talk about those creatures to finish off the main deck here, and we'll start with the two of Scrap Heap Scrounger. Now, do remember that we're playing Traverse the Olven Wall. That allows us to play fewer copies of some of our creatures, but even if we weren't playing Traverse, I might just go two or three Scrap Heap here in this deck. And we are playing a third copy in the sideboard when we do run up against, like, Hard Control, but Hard Control just isn't that important right now. There is the Jeskai Sahili deck, but you'll more often see four-color Sahili, and Scrap Heap Scrounger isn't quite as good against that deck. But Scrap Heap Scrounger is still a good card <laughs> that is super resilient, gives us another late-game resilient option, you know. So that's really important, too. But it also provides an artifact for unlicensed disintegration. That's a point in its favor. So I do want to play at least a couple of copies, but I don't want to go overboard. We're going to play a two of Tireless Tracker in the deck, and I am heavily considering taking out a Harness Lightning and putting in a third Tireless Tracker, because Tracker does an awful lot of stuff for us. This is another really grindy card that can get huge as the game goes on, you know. It can provide something to, um, you know, revolt a Fatal Push, which is really important. It provides artifacts for unlicensed disintegration. It's the only real card in the deck, main deck at least, that provides us with card advantage, which a deck like this that subsists on the Dynavolt Tower really, really really wants to. So there's a lot of stuff that Tireless Tracker does, and I wouldn't mind a third copy. But point is, you play some Tireless Tracker because it's a win condition. It, you know, provides synergy a bunch of different ways. It goes really well with the Evolving Wilds in the deck that we want to play anyway because we're trying to get Delirium, you know. So just a lot of different angles to play in a Tireless Tracker. We're going to at least play the two. We're going to play a three of Walking Ballista in the deck, which is one of the hottest creatures in Standard right now. People are just putting this in everything, you know. For good reason, like, this can take out anything early game that Mardu Vehicles plays. And if you're on the play, this is important. Check check this out. This is important. If you're on the play, you'll play your you'll play your uh, ballista turn two. Now you can take out a Sahili Rai on the play before they can get that combo off, you know. On your turn four, you'll put a counter on this thing, giving it two counters, and then if they try to shoot off Sahili Rai, you can just instant speed, bust it for two, and kill off and kill their Sahili Rai. So that's an important play to remember if you're on the play. So there's a lot of good reasons for walking Ballista. You know, it takes out small dudes, hits Planeswalkers, hits players, is great to bring back with a Liliana late game when you can make it really big. Super grindy card that you can just like bring back with Liliana, play as a 2-2, and then just start putting counters on it and applying pressure every turn. You know, what are you going to do about this? So walking Ballista just has every use in the world in this deck, not to mention that it's yet another artifact for unlicensed disintegration. So play three Ballista. Yes, do it. Yes. We're going to play a two of Bristling Hydra here. And the hardest decision when building this deck was to play either a two of Hydra or a two of Dark Dwellers. I really wanted to play Goblin Dark Dwellers super bad um, in this deck. I really like the idea of like casting Traverse, tutoring for Dark Dwellers, casting Dark Dwellers, and then recasting the Traverse out of your graveyard. I like that idea. also like the idea of like getting unlicensed disintegration and fatal push off, off obviously, <laughs> off of it. You know, you know, you cast a free spell and you get energy if you have a Dynamo Tower out. So that's important too. It sort of seems like our best impression of a Torrential Gear Hulk, but it's Sorcery Speed, which kind of makes it suck a little bit more. But ultimately I decided that Goblin Dark Dwellers just probably wasn't quite as good as Bristling Hydra in this deck, especially given the energy sub thing. Bristling Hydra just doesn't really die to anything, and we're an energy-based deck, so we can give it Hexproof all day. Like, if it's more important to us to use our energy on Bristling Hydra than it would be to use it on Dynavolt Tower, we will gladly do that and just let Dynavolt Tower generate energy for Bristling Hydra if we're up against a deck that plays a whole lot of removal. So, Hydra will almost never die, and when it does, you can just bring it back with Liliana. Like, it's a never-ending threat that gets really, really big relatively fast. Almost there. I'm going to play one copy of Ishkana in the deck because I think we'd be a fool not to do that. This chumps all day against every deck in the format. Even the Sahili decks that play like Rogue Refiner and, um, uh, what is it, Whirler Virtu Virtuoso and a bunch of other creatures. So, like, this can chump against those decks, too. Um, and that's just really, really important. It, it blocks um, Heart of Kirin, you know, and if you're willing to let go of a spider, it can block and kill. Um, Heart of Kieran. This is also grindy. It can just kill the opponent with its ability over the course of a few turns. So just Ishkana is a very important card, and if we're going to touch a Delirium theme at all, I think we have to at least play the one of. But a one of Ishkana is fine. We've got Traverse to find it if we need it. And finally, just the one copy of Noxious Gear Hulk, because he's Liliana's best friend and has been 
since he came out, you know? Being able to basically bring back a noxious gear hulk with Liliana and kill something else is just a crazy play that puts a huge guy on the board and kills anything you want to on the opponent's side. And being able to do that over and over is just unbelievable. So I think it's worth making room for the one of noxious in the, in the main. Here's our lands right here, which we're going to play 22 of. And that sounds relatively low, but the Jund Energy aggro deck plays 20. And even though that's an aggro deck, I got, I can do one better than that. The Four Color Sahili deck that just won a Grand Prix over the last Last weekend plays 19 lands <laughs> so I think we can get away with 22 in this deck especially with you know both traverse the Ulvenwald and a tomb with ether in the deck you know and we've got ether hub to make whatever mana we want that's really cool we've got a bunch of dual lands we've got evolving wilds to go fetch mana to so you know we shouldn't have any problem fixing our mana at all and you know, we're going pretty late in this game. We'll get lands. Here's the sideboard right here. I'm going to go through this real quick because I want to show you a couple of sideboard guides against these two important matchups. Natural State is mostly for Heart of Kirin. There's that. But it can kill other stuff too. Transgress the Mind is specifically good against Sahili decks and any other control decks you run up against. Release the Gremlin uh, is our best card against Mardu all day. Shock is in there against Sahili as well. Chandra will often come in against Mardu vehicles in game two and will sometimes put that one copy in against Healy as well, and Chandra's also very good against the green-black counters decks too. Um, we'll put in another to the slaughter. That's specifically against the Healy decks. Kalidus is against aggro. Pick the brain against the Healy, and then Scrap Heap uh, just to shore up the control matchup. Now, as far as what do we side out specifically in the Mardu matchup, we'll side out a Transgress the Mind, both Scrap Heap Scroungers, a Traverse the Olvenwald, a To the Slaughter, and two Tireless Tracker. Now, I went in order there of what I like to side out. You don't have to side out Tireless, and you don't have to side out To the Slaughter, especially Game 3, if you expect they're going, or that they have sided in Chandra's. So there's that too. But we're going to side in two Release the Gremlins against Mardu, one Kalidus, two Chandra's, and two uh, Natural States. Natural State versus their Heart of Kirins and stuff. Chandra is just a great mid-game card against them that can blow up pretty much everything they play except for Heart because um, it's sorcery speed and provide us with card advantage and a win button if we can get our ultimate off. So there's that too. It's also ramp. Just Chandra's awesome in this matchup. And the release to Gremlins is probably the best card in this matchup against Mardu. Versus Sahili, we're also taking a fair amount of stuff out. We're going to take out most of the stuff that's good against aggro, to be honest. We're just going to take out an Ishkana, two Lilies, a Noxious Gear Hulk, two Hydras, two Pushes, and in a Tomb with Ether. That's a lot of stuff. But we're going to put in three Transgress the Mines, one Pick the Brain, um, one To the Slaughter, two Shocks, a Scrap Heap Scrounger, and one Chandra. Now, you don't have to put in that Chandra in this match. You can keep in a Tomb, you can keep in a Push if you'd rather do that. Um, but Transgress is just specifically good against them. Same thing with Pick the Brain, especially if we can get Delirium. To the Slaughter is also great against them. Shock can break up the combo for very, very cheap. Scrap Heap is good against the Control Variants, especially, because it can keep coming back. And then Chandra, I wouldn't mind having the one copy in so that we again have a win button and a way to get card advantage against those decks. Before I get to the power rankings here, there's some maybes that I want to go through. First of all, some two-drop creatures I elected not to play include Sylvan Advocate and Grim Flayer. And I think that Grim Flayer is probably the definitely better <laughs> of those two. And, you know, probably could definitely see some play in this deck. Grim Flayer makes a very, very strong case, but I wanted to devote more slots to removal and more slots to spells so that we could, you know, make Dynavolt Tower work a little bit better. Now, if there's a weakness that this deck has when compared to its Teamer and Grix's counterparts, is that it doesn't have quite as much card advantage, especially in the main deck. We're sort of leaning very heavily on Tireless Tracker, and it's a very slow card advantage producer. So, we need some sort of card advantage, and I could see putting in Oath of Nyssa um, in the deck. That, or Painful Truce, by the way, especially in the board, I could see Painful Truce. So, we'd put it in in the Sahili matchup, where our life total doesn't matter as much, but... Card advantage does matter a lot. So I could see Painful Truce in the board, definitely, and I could see Oath of Nyssa in the main. I just have no idea what to take out. And there's at least the point that Oath of Nyssa is an enchantment that could help us out with Delirium Count. But again, I'm just not really sure what to take out. 
Here are your power rankings. A final score of 69, which is a very high score, especially compared to some of the stuff I've been doing lately, but the deck is that way. It has that high of a score because it's just got so many different plants, so many paths to victory, but still stays very consistent because it can get its mana and thin its deck with all these one mana, you know, cards like Batoon with Ether and uh, Traverse the Olvenwald. So the deck has a lot of plans, but they come together very well because it can devote a lot of its slots to making those synergies work, you know. A Tomb with Ether both puts a sorcery in the graveyard and gives us two energy for Dynavolt Tower. So that's great synergy and it fixes our mana, thins our deck, all kinds of stuff. Same thing with Traverse the Olvenwall. So we've got a lot of ways of making whatever plan we need for any given game come together even though we don't have a butt ton of card advantage or anything. We're going to draw substantial threats, you know. We've got things like Bristling Hydra um, in the main deck. We've got um, Tireless Tracker, Walking Ballista, Noxious Gear Hulk, Ishkana. We've got a bunch of great threats in this deck along with a ton of crazy removal. We are playing all of the best removal in this format. So this is the quintessential mid-range deck. It just plays sort of like a mid-range, uh, a control deck, and sort of like an aggro deck, you know. But it's just incredibly grindy too. Dynavolt Tower sees to that. Ishkana sees to that. Liliana sees to that. So we've got some really good early game options with all of our removal. We've got a ton of mid-game options with planeswalkers and creatures, and we can grind the game out with Liliana and Walking Ballista. You know, Bristling Hydra is a pretty grindy card. Dynavolt Tower is the ultimate grindy card. So we've just got a lot of play at all stages of the game. Pretty sure that's all I got for this one. This is probably going to be a relatively long video, but I had a lot to say about this one. So take to the comments. Let me know how you felt. I know that it's a different deck. You know, it's sort of a cross between Jund Energy Aggro and a Dynavolt Tower deck, you know, but that's pretty much what I was going for. I wanted to play all of the removal and a bunch of substantial threats, and that's what Jund is best at. So it's pretty easy to jam Dynavolt Tower and, like, still get Delirium in this deck. So a lot of stuff going for it. Let me know how you felt about it. But that's all I've got for now. Stay tuned for next time when we're going to try to break Renegade Rallyer, which has some play in Modern, but no one really plays it in Standard, and I think that's crazy because this card is very, very good, and it has proven itself on a bigger stage than Standard. So we're going to try to break that and still beat the big decks in the format next time. That's just going to be in a couple of days. But if you like this content, like the content, hit the thumbs up button. You can also follow me on Twitter now at SPMTGDev. I'd really like if you did that because it's another way of getting notifications. Or if I have something stupid to say, you'll see it on Twitter. So <laughs> follow me on Twitter and share this video. You can sub if you're new and you can hit the notifications to make sure that you get all of the things. You can hit the bell to make sure you get the notifications. I think that's all the YouTube stuff. Anyway, I'm Dev from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.